What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with John Jones breaks silence on Tom Aspinall fight. John Jones hasn't had much to say about Tom Aspinall in recent months, at least not publicly. But now that the rising heavyweight remains the UFC's interim champ, Bones appears to be acknowledging that the two should fight. For a little while now, plenty of fans, pundits, and fighters have been calling for a fight between Jones and Aspinall. But since the UFC and Jones have been targeting a fight with Stipe Miocic, it hasn't been clear if and when Bones and Aspinall will scrap. Well, at UFC 304 on Saturday, Aspinall took another step towards making that fight a reality by quickly taking out Curtis Blades. The win appears to have prompted Jones to post this. Supply and demand at its finest. I love it. It's an interesting development since Jones has largely focused on talking about Miocic and justifying the fight. Meanwhile, Aspinall continues to campaign for a scrap with the former light heavyweight king and current heavyweight champ. Following his win at UFC 304, the British star shared this video call out. I'm the best heavyweight in the world. Prove me wrong, John. If you think you are, prove me wrong. Simple, nothing personal. I ain't hate on nobody. I'm the best heavyweight in the world. If you think you are, let's settle it. Simple as that. Now, during fight week, Dana White confirmed that the winner of Aspinall Blades will fight the winner of Jones Miocic. But the way Aspinall is talking, you have to wonder if maybe he's hoping to push the UFC to abandon that bout and go with the unification fight next. Of course, it could be that he's just assuming that Jones will beat Miocic, which, let's be honest, a lot of people are doing. But what do you think? Should the UFC shell the Jones Miocic fight and go forward with a heavyweight unification bout? Dana White releases fighter from the UFC. Mohamed Mokayev has been regarded as one of the top prospects in all of mixed martial arts for some time now, never mind just the flyweight division. But it looks like UFC 304 will likely mark the last time we see Mokayev in the octagon. The Dagestani-born UK fighter faced Manel Kopp on Saturday night and worked his way to a unanimous decision win. The fight immediately drew fire online since it didn't feature the ferocity most people were expecting on account of not one, but two pre-fight altercations that they had leading up to UFC 304. Well, after the fight, which was the last on Mokayev's UFC deal, he claimed that the promotion warned him not to wrestle too much against Kopp. According to the 23-year-old, the UFC brass did so because a new deal was contingent on whether the cop fight was entertaining. They said they're gonna see how I perform. They don't want to see me keep shooting and taking somebody down, but I've done what I could do with, with like tonight. Yeah, yeah they, don't, they don't like this because they, they tried to get rid of flyweights before and they don't want this kind of fight. But listen, I'm young. I'm still not in my prime. Mm -hmm. If they, they want me to stand and bank and bank with toe to toe with this, like, 30 years old, grown months, I have to do what's best for me to win. Not only did Dana White tell the media the promotion won't be re-signing Mokayev, he dismissed the claim that it has anything to do with his fighting style. He's not he's not under contract anymore. I think the PFL is gonna get a great undefeated guy. Why none of the none of the above. It's it's a listen, for whatever re listen, the stuff that played out here over the last several months that started at the PI and other stories of the, you know this breaking out, plus many other things. These guys uh these guys don't want to resign him. There you have it. And while you never know what can happen in the future, it certainly looks like Mokayev's days as a UFC fighter are over. Case in point, the UFC has already removed Mokayev from the promotion's flyweight rankings. So what do you think is the real story here? Was Mokayev let go because of his grappling-centric game or for the reasons White claimed? Up next, Habib reacts to Bilal Muhammad fight. Following Bilal Muhammad's pretty clear and somewhat surprising win over Leon Edwards at UFC 304, Habib Nurmagomedov was quick to praise the new welterweight champ. Habib also apparently dismissed Dana White's assertion that Muhammad's victory was on account of time he spent training with the legend. Since Edwards was largely able to shut down the wrestling of Kamaru Usman and Kobe Covington in his last two title defenses, the consensus was that Bilal would also have a tough time taking Rocky down. But Muhammad proved that theory to be completely off base as he took Edwards down multiple times and grappled his way to a title victory. After the card, White cited Bilal's time training with Habib as a factor, while also taking a poke at how the fight played out from an entertainment perspective. Habib, however, was quick to dismiss that notion. All that aside, Muhammad understandably wasn't short on confidence while reflecting on his performance afterward. I think I'm the best fighter in the world. I know I'm the best fighter in the world. I just had to prove it and I had to show you guys. We had three years 
to sit there and I had to sit there and dwell on that thing, uh, that last fight of everybody saying, oh, he would have beat him. He would have won the last other rounds. He would have did this. He would have did that. We didn't even get started that fight. This fight, we got started. This is what we did. We just dominated the champion. We made it look easy. And we did it better than Kobe did, better than Usman did. And Now, it'll be interesting to see how long Bilal can hold on to the belt. The surging fighter was asked about the possibility of fighting Shavkat Rachmanov next and Muhammad said he's down for the fight. So whether you're a fan of Bilal's style or not, no one can deny his determination and heart. UFC Fight Updates The end of the UFC's 2024 campaign is fast approaching, but that doesn't mean the promotion's matchmakers still don't have plenty of work to do for this year's schedule. Case in point, recently, next month's UFC 305 card in Australia received a couple of new matchups. Dan Hooker has confirmed that, as expected, he's going to battle fellow lightweight contender Mateusz Gamrot at the event. It'll be interesting to see whether Hooker can shut down Gamrot's formidable grappling tools. In addition, All In Sports Management confirmed that, since Teresa Bleda has withdrawn from UFC 305, Casey O'Neill will now fight Luana Santos. It's also being reported that undefeated flyweight Clayton Carpenter will fight Lucas Rocha at the UFC's upcoming October 12th Fight Night card which has yet to have an official venue and location announced. And next month's UFC 306 card at the Sphere will feature a bantamweight scrap between contenders Irene Aldana and Norma Dumont. Patty Pimlet talks about Ilya Topuria fight. As it stands right now, Patty Pimlet and Ilya Topuria appear to be on different UFC paths, but on account of their rivalry, Patty was asked about the possibility of fighting the featherweight champ following his latest win. Pimlet faced longtime lightweight contender Bobby Green at UFC 304 and buzzed the MMA world by choking King out with the triangle choke. Following the event, a media member asked Patty about fighting Topuria down the line, and not surprisingly, he made it clear he would, even if there's no way of it taking place at featherweight. Yeah, there is life, but I, I can't make featherweight, lad. I'd have to chop me leg off. There's no way I'm making 145, but um, no, I don't think it'd have to be for the title. I think I'd sell it anyway. And and speaking of Patty's big win on Saturday, the brash and charismatic fighter emphatically acknowledged that silencing his doubters made him very, very, very happy. Everyone underestimates me, lad. Just because I look like a 14-year-old girl. Oh, I mean. Ah, you can't be shutting some heads up. It's brilliant. Like, I love shutting haters up, lad. The amount of people that I've seen say he's never going to be ranked. He's not good enough to be ranked. He'll never be in the top 15. All that, like even fighters, I've seen on YouTube people talking, and then I just go out there and put on a flawless performance. Whether you're a fan of Patty the Batty or not, there's no denying he made a serious statement at UFC 304. Up next, MMA community reacts to Dana White's announcement. If you watched the post-fight presser for UFC 304, you likely noticed Dana White seemed to be in a particular sour mood as he expressed dissatisfaction with Bilal's performance, Mohamed Mokayev, as well as a few other questions he was asked. Case in point, White was also asked if the promotion might move to handing out $100,000 bonuses instead of $50,000 for every event. White had agreed to up the bonuses for UFC 304 at the pre-fight presser. White, however, offered this fiery response. I think tonight showed that we should not, no. Oh. Upping them doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anybody fight any harder. It doesn't, doesn't change anything. I'm not doing this again. Ever. Ever. Today was the last, the last day that I'm doing that, yeah. Not saying that in the future the bonuses couldn't get up, but I'm not gonna be at a press conference and say 200, 300. Never again. Never again. So you, you can thank everybody on this card for that. Well, not surprisingly, grumpy Dana's comments prompted blowback online, including from Ariel Helwani, who was one of several people who noted the card took place in the wee hours of the morning. You guys think the middle of the night card had anything to do with this or nah? Well, he's the one who put the card together, so who's to blame? The UFC literally effed up last night's fight card in every way possible, from an awful start time for the UK fans to serious production issues and lackluster performances. But according to Dana, the fighters are to blame. My god, the arrogance. Dana is pathetically scummy. Looking for any excuse to cut bonuses and pay, the card was at 4 in the morning. The crowd were barely cheering because they were probably exhausted. How the F are you going to ask for peak performance from fighters and then not accommodate them at all? Scumbag, why are you trashing your own fighters? You are nothing without them. He was looking for a way to decrease the bonuses anyway. UFC Noche Sphere pre-production is probably costing them more money than originally planned. But what do you think? Was White out of line with these comments? Or does he have a valid point? 
Marab Devashvili calls out UFC referee. Marab Devashvili has made it clear multiple times he's not a fan of Mark Goddard, and recently, he laid into the veteran ref once again. Devashvili has accused Goddard of stopping fights early on more than one occasion, and the bantamweight contender believes that was the case in Sean O'Malley's win over his buddy Aljamain Sterling. The Funkmaster was sent to the deck by a nice counter shot from O'Malley in their fight last August, and as Sugar followed up, the fight was called. According to Marab, however, Goddard didn't follow what he was telling Aljamain at the time. While speaking with the Schmo recently, the Georgian fighter said this. So, and then Margada just, he stopped Aljo early because he was saying, hey, move, move. And when Aljo moved, then he stopped. Well, bye, bye, bye. If you tell me move and I move, then you stop me while you tell me move. You know what I'm saying? Chances are we won't see Goddard officiating the headliner for UFC 306, which will feature O'Malley and Devashvili throwing down in the main event. Max Holloway vs. Ilya Topuria is in the works. Ilya Topuria said on Spanish TV that he's going to be fighting Max Holloway at Abu Dhabi. With reports of Islam Makachev stepping out of Abu Dhabi due to injury, it's possible that Ilya and Max take the headlining spot. Ariel Halwani seemed to confirm this by tweeting, The Islam injury is going to be interesting. Can't do Abu Dhabi, no MSG, and they wouldn't put him with Connor in December, which means earliest Armin gets his shot is January? I guess he doesn't have to do the PSA after all. He also responded to a fan asking about the Ilya and Max fight by saying, Yes, this is very real because of the injury Islam revealed in a recent interview. Plans are now a changing. Leon Edwards breaks silence after his loss at UFC 304 to the new champion, Bilal Muhammad. Leon posted on Instagram addressing his defeat, saying, To my fans, I'm sorry. I couldn't get the job done this time. I have been through harder times than this in life, and I will rise again. Thanks for all the love and support. I will get this back in blood. Hashtag headshot. Top comments. Jones at heavyweight, one win against the guy who just lost to the actual belt holder, Aspinall at heavyweight. Multiple wins over multiple ranked active fighters. Wins interim belt and doesn't wait a year to defend it. Aspinall the real champion. I heard Dana saying that no one on the card fought like they wanted the bonus. I guess Tom wanted the Jones fight instead of the 200k bonus. Like what the F is Dana on? Despite Bilal dominating Leon, the two judges scored biasly, making the fight a close fight. Only one judge was honest. Yeah, Jones' IQ tells him not to step foot in the octagon with Aspinall. 